What's up guys and welcome to today's video about the very anticipated topic of smart shopping campaigns and how to use them to scale to over 30,000, almost $40,000 in sales only with smart shopping. So as you probably know, smart shopping ads are very tough. Sometimes they work great, sometimes they don't. Actually, across most of the accounts that I manage, including my own, they are doing all right, but they are not making that much up in terms of volume, right? So normally the normal shopping campaigns and search campaigns also even um, do more volume. But in this particular account here that I um, run for a client, they are actually doing a pretty, pretty great job. So you can see here um, that we have a cost of around, because these are the campaigns right here. So we have spent around 7,000 on smart shopping over the past 30 days, and we've made almost 40. So the ROAS of the whole account is pretty solid with almost 500%, even though it's a very competitive niche. And this is a prime example of how well smart shopping ads can really do for your business if you follow all the best practices and if you do the things the right way and if you, um, you know, use it in the best possible way too. So this video will contain two parts. So if you want to make sure that you're not missing out on the second, please subscribe to this channel. Also push on the or, or click on the notification bell so that you get the second video right away. And in this first video, I talk about how to set smart shopping campaigns up, what we did right here. So what we also paid attention to and what you definitely need to keep in mind in your own business to get them up and running, make your first sale and so on and so forth. So with this being said, let's jump right in 39,000 with smart shopping step by step part one. And let's start with when to use them, right? So first of all, I would use them when you have a lot of products, let's say 100 or more, because one of the main uh, benefits of smart shopping is that you can easier manage these products. And also, ideally, you can spend more than $30 a day. Now, here's the thing. Of course, they can also be super, super valuable if you only have, let's say, 30 products. I'm just saying that the more products you have, the easier your decision should be. If you have a thousand uh, products, absolutely try them out. If you have 10,000, it's a no brainer as well, because the more products Google gets to like test and see which works best, the better it is. In our case, we have over like 3000 products in the account, but we have around 180 in, in this case, the better performing of these two smart shopping campaigns, right? So 180 products, around 3000 in the whole account, and it's doing a really, really fantastic job. Also, in the second step, as I said, you need to be able to spend more than $30 a day. Now, it works with less, definitely. It's not that there is like a minimum that Google gives you. But I found that, you know, I have ran smart shopping campaigns at $10, $30, $80, $200, $400 a day. And um, they definitely work best when you can spend more. Now, basically, sky's the limit here unless you cannot get any impressions anymore. But you should spend like $30 a day plus because that way Google actually optimizes quicker. And that's really important. So if we get back to this, a lot of products first for a second, um, it is important that you, when you, you know, have way less than these, let's say you have just 20 products, you can still run a small scale smart shopping test. But in this case, don't just push everything to smart shopping, right? Because you won't be able to use normal shopping campaigns anymore. You cannot really use dynamic remarketing anymore. And things are just messed up if you run everything just by one smart shopping campaign, even though it's what Google really recommends. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we get to how to build it. And you should build it by using a collection, let's say a category. In our case, it's one very big, like you can call it brand inside our store, right? So we have one product type inside the store and we are advertising this whole product type in the smart shopping campaign. So if you, let's say, have a general store with five different like subcategories, you can advertise a whole category. This makes a lot of sense. Also, if you have a niche store and let's say you have a few different um, uh, like categories in there, let's say you're selling jewelry and you have bracelets, necklaces, rings and all that stuff. One very smart way to set the smart shopping campaign up would be to, for example, only put rings in there. Now, I feel that as long as you keep those products um, similar in terms of their type, I'm not sure if that's really true, but from our perspective, what I've done so far with them, it seems that they are a little more powerful if they have like a category in itself. First of all, of course, you can design an image specifically for that category, so that makes a lot of sense. But also, I feel that this way, just the optimization is a little bit better. But of course, you can also use them in, the rent, in a general store. Alternatively, if you don't have like bestsellers or categories that make sense, you can also just test them randomly. And in this case, for example, you can pick like 30% of your products 
and you can push all of them to smart shopping, right? So that's definitely one thing that you can do. The thing is, as I said, the key is simply don't advertise all of them. This will just mess up your account. B, well, never advertise all products on smart. Very, very important. Keep that in mind. Um, just messy. Then you can use custom labels to segment. So that's a question that I get all the time. If you want to build a smart shopping campaign and you don't want to advertise everything, you need to use custom labels. Now that's very easy if you use the Simprosis shopping app, for example, you can just go into the product field and you can assign a custom label there. You can call it, for example, smart. And then when you go into creating the campaign, you simply select that every product with the custom label smart, a custom label zero equals to smart should be, you know, um, advertised in that one smart shopping campaign. So that's a very straightforward way. If you use Google Sheets to manage your feed, you can simply enter the value smart, for example, in the custom label zero field. That way you can then set up your campaign that way without having to advertise all the products, which as I said, we want to avoid. Also use a highly targeted image and headline and description for the relevant placements. That's what I said. One of the reasons why it works better in a niche environment or within one collection or category is that you can or you have to use an image and a headline and a description for your smart campaigns because they show up on shopping on youtube on display they show up everywhere and google needs some more assets that they can show right so depending on the placement they are showing like a big image of your um, that you specified with some headlines and stuff and not necessarily your actual products the way you're used to when you're using google shopping in the normal way so make sure that this is a highly targeted image and make sure that if you advertise a certain collection that you show products of that collection in that image. So don't let this, don't underestimate the importance of that image because it will show up quite a lot and it, Google will use it quite a lot and it can still generate a lot of conversions. Headline and description, the same thing, make them about the products in that um, collection or category that you are selling. So really important here, much easier when you have a niche store. If you have a general store, then you have to like, you know, keep it somewhat broad. It's not that easy, but always think about how you can make the best possible copy for that. In our case, we made a big image um, about the products in this category. As I said, we have around 180 products in that one um, in that one category, in that one type. And we make the image solely about this type of products, even though we have much, much more in the store, of course. So keep it very narrow because in this, when, when this image shows, people don't see all the products. They just see the image with the headline and the description. So it should still be highly relevant so that they can click on it and, well, eventually ideally buy. Number three is how to get first sales. And ideally, you should have high price products in there because think about it. If you have 10, 50 and hundred dollar products in there, even though you set the maximized co uh, conversion value goal, Google tends to very often deliver the cheap products is what I have observed, right? And let's say you set a goal, let's say you have a budget and you set all the products in there and you expect to make like sales, but then you only get these 10 or $20 sales. It is way, way more difficult to actually get profitable, right? It's way more difficult to get profitable with $20 products. So what I like to do is I want to have products in a similar price range in there. Um, not everything necessarily the same because I still want to give Google the opportunity and the option to like test several price points and see whether $80 works better than $100. But don't test 10 against 200 because if you're unlucky, Google will distribute the $10 product all the time and you will lose on this expensive option. So have high priced and similar priced products in the campaign. As I said, we have mostly products above like I think $60 or something like that. What you need to know about this store as well is sometimes people buy stuff in bulk and also sometimes we get like B2B orders. So we have AOVs ranging anywhere from like $40 to three or 400. But the principle is the same for you. Make sure that you have high price products in a similar price range in there. And as soon as you make a sale, as soon as you make a sale, chances are you have a good ROAS or ROI if you do that, right? So if you sell a hundred dollar product, it's much more likely that you're profitable than if you sell like a ten dollar product. So that's the big, big benefit of that. Also start with maximize conversion value to not limit them too much. And later on, you can change them to target ROAS. So what I see a lot is that people say, you know what, um, I want to like get a ROAS of 400%, right? But if you do that too early, Google is not able to give you the right impressions and to give you the right uh, clicks because they think, okay, 
The target ROAS is 400%, which is quite high. So probably I'm not giving them that traffic now because I might not be able to hit that goal. So if you come up with a target ROAS goal, especially if it's too high, Google at some point may just stop your spend entirely and you won't get any impressions anymore. So start with the maximize conversion value goal. It may mean that you're not exactly profitable, even though very often you are with maximize conversion value. And as soon as you get like actual consistency in there, and as soon as you are roughly, you know, let's say you're always around 300 and 400% ROAS. In this case, you can actually, actually switch to target ROAS and say, I want to have a target ROAS goal of 350%, for example. And in this case, you will notice that most likely the campaign will get more consistency. Um, it will filter out some of the traffic that is not working that well because now Google Ads has a goal and that you basically tell them if you're in, unsure whether you could make another sale, then please focus on like security instead and please focus on stability and only give me the most relevant query so that you can hit that goal, right? But don't do that from the very beginning. In our case, in our campaign, we did the same. We uh, Actually, we did, no, we did the opposite. When he started working with me, we had it on target ROAS. I then at some point removed the goal because I was noticing that we were losing a lot of traffic. Then we were up again with our sales because the goal wasn't there. And later on, I tweaked it all the time. I think now one of the campaigns has a ROAS goal. The other one has just maximize conversion value. But in the beginning, do it with conversion value and switch later on. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the how to get first sales and for this first video of the smart shopping um, case study right here. What you need to know is that you shouldn't change smart shopping too often, right? So that's one of the most important aspects about smart shopping. If you launch the campaign, you need to commit to it. You cannot just say, okay, as soon as it goes well, I make a change. As soon as it doesn't go well, I, uh, you know, change the bidding strategy or I change the products because it needs time to optimize. You have to think about it. Basically, everything about the campaign is, is uh, auto-managed, the bids, the products that are delivered, the placements, the negative or the, the negative keywords technically. Um, so if you don't give it much time, if you just change it every few days, it will never really work on its peak. So I have smart shopping I have smart shopping campaigns that are sometimes running for one or two months without any change. Of course it's a lot of work to get there, but at some point you really need to bring that stability in. So that's extremely important. Don't change them too often, only if you really have to, only if you realize that it's just not getting anywhere. Also, don't change the products too often, rather create multiple smart shopping campaigns. That's better than just like changing the products inside your campaign all the time. So in the next video, what we will talk about is how to optimize smart shopping for 400% plus ROAS. So we talk more about optimization of them. It is fairly limited what you can do here. So please don't expect some crazy magic tricks, but we are, I'm showing you a few nice gimmicks of what you can do to get smart shopping campaigns up. But a little hint, it is easier to optimize a normal shopping campaign. So um, looking forward for that. And also I talk about how to scale smart shopping past 10,000. So basically what we then did in the next steps here as well in this account and ultimately the best practices for smart shopping. So I'm giving you some more general advice on what you should keep in mind, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Smart shopping is still relatively early. Now, I know that they have been around for months, probably half a year or something or even more. But in terms of overall sales volume, they are still much smaller than the other normal shopping and search campaigns I run. Okay, so combined, I've probably made, I don't know, two or three hundred thousand dollars in total revenue with smart shopping, which is absolutely tiny compared to the millions I've generated across the board with Google shopping alone, right? Normal Google shopping without even search. So this being said, there are simply there is simply less data when it comes to smart, which you always have to keep in mind. So please don't ask me about like, hey, I need a hundred more tips and I need this and that. It's just not that you know I have that many insights yet compared to normal shopping. And whenever I recommend you something, it's actual real world data. It's not just some theory. It's not something that I've watched in a YouTube video. It's actually from me or my clients accounts or something that I've realized when I coached someone and we actually discovered something new in the coaching. So the coaching is also something that might be interesting for you if you are running Google ads for your e-commerce business and you want to take them to the next level, whether that's like four, five, six, or maybe even seven figures. So the people in my coaching and my one-on-one -on -one eight week Google ads coaching, I have people starting from never have made a sale before all the way up to they are making six figures and they want to scale it to the next level. So if you want to check it out, make sure to check the description. There you will be able to choose between 
working by yourself and working with me. And if you pick the work with me option, you will get to the coaching and you can check out if that's something for you. I highly recommend that you do that. And yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. I hope that you got some value out of this video today. As I said, please subscribe to not miss on the second part of this video. And until then, I wish you all the best with your business. Please leave a like if you enjoyed that and let me know in the comments whether you use smart shopping ads right now. Would be interesting for me to know. So this being said, as I said, thanks for watching and I'm seeing you hopefully in the next video again, guys. Bye-bye.